I had never been to Scotland, so when I first researched it, I was surprised of how diverse its nature is. To see this diversity with my own eyes, I hiked four trails, handpicked after weeks of researching dozens of hiking apps, blogs and vlogs. In this film, I will list all expenses of my road trip to show how affordable it can be and spread various tips throughout the video. Now, come join me to explore the wild nature of Scotland. I arrived in Edinburgh, rented a car and first went to the east coast. I won't show any maps here, but you can find all trails on our map at trailwalkers.ceo. My first hike leads me to the little fisher town of St. Apps. It's a village with a sad history, as here Scotland's worst fishing disaster happened, when the great storm of 1881 took 189 men, leaving hundreds of widows and fatherless children in surrounding coastal villages. Many of them were eyewitnesses of these events, so to them a sculpture has been erected here. It's a no drone zone uh, from April 1st, but today is March 29th. Wow, now look at this view. Looks like you can walk down there and then walk that ridge. No, I won't do it. I want to survive and do the next hikes as well. You have a contrast between dramatic coastal landscapes and then just green meadows with sheep.
that would fit in well into this uh, landscape a lighthouse and preferably a white one. Oh look! Westwards, the terrain becomes more wild and mountainous. And then I reach the highlands. I am greeted by the first mountain of the highlands, the Shepherd of Glencoe. Its majestic pyramid-like appearance has made it the most photographed mountain in Scotland. On my way back to Edinburgh, I saw it on a cloudy day, and I must say, it looks even more dramatic. And then I enter Glencoe, sometimes referred to as the Glen of Weeping, because of a massacre that took place here in 1692, but more about this a bit later. Unfortunately, many just stop here to take some photos, so the trail was much less crowded, at least in March. So this is a valley within the valley. A glen means a valley, and so I'm climbing up over this uh, this balcony. So it's basically a climb from this valley into another valley. So that's why it's a hidden valley.
There's almost no wind. You hear some birds, but otherwise it's so peaceful here. This valley is often called the Lost Valley, and it was here where survivors of a massacre of the Clan MacDonald fled to and hid their cattle. I can't even imagine how they managed to get their animals up here. Oh yes, just a quick word about driving here in Scotland. If you come from a country where you drive on the right side, driving here may be a bit stressful for two reasons. First, the left lane, which however you will get used to starting from day two. I had only one case when I turned onto the wrong lane and almost caused an accident. But the second thing is, the roads in the highlands are pretty narrow, so you have to be focused the whole time, no looking around. So my advice is, when renting a car, take an automatic gearbox, so you have one distraction less. After leaving Fort William, I drive by the most famous castle in Scotland. I didn't have the time to go inside, therefore I had no interest in paying the parking fee. So I accidentally found a great viewpoint. Quairang is one of the two most popular hikes on Skye, the other one being the Old Man of Store, which is known for its needle-like cliffs. If you can do both of them, do them, but if only one, do this one, as it's similar in the looks and has just more to offer. This place is amazing and uh, rain doesn't matter. Actually, it, I think it looks even better with all the rain and fog, the mysterious mountains, the cliffs.
Okay, my drone went crazy here and I almost lost it, but I recovered it in the end and it turned out one propeller had detached. One thing that helps remembering the trails and experiences touching the surfaces of the trail. There were some people at the beginning of the trail, but here right now there's no one. It's just so beautiful. Then I saw a nice option for a small detour, which you can also see on our map. It looks like a fascinating trail. So you go here along that there's a little fence. And then until the last tip from where you should be seeing the ocean. It could be windy, but let's try it. Okay, change of plans. Uh, the tip looks covered in a cloud, so no use from there. So I will turn back to the blue. What's that? Am I seeing ghosts? Ah, the new trail is being constructed. They're using stones from the mountain. That's nice. Portree is a beautiful little town on Skye and here I had planned to get some dinner. However, all restaurants were fully booked, so some locals recommended to go look for the takeaway options on the pier. And it was great. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor? For of him, and through him, and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. If you hear the word summit in connection with Scotland, you should think about Munros, uh, mountains which are 3,000 feet tall. And so there's this uh, Munro show, uh, which is really, really funny. Uh, they are the pioneers of drone filming, but I won't do a Munro. I found a mountain which is actually also featured on the Munro show. 
probably the only one that is a non-Monroe. Uh, but it's so cool, it's so unique that um, some call it the most iconic mountain of Scotland. So let's go and explore it. Glencoe was amazing. The Isle of Skye, majestic. But my favorite region of Scotland is by far this one. Ascent, sometimes regarded as the last wilderness of Scotland. It looks a bit like Mars, with the main difference of having plenty of water. Silwen is the crown jewel of Ascent, and I fell in love with it the first time I saw it. Silwen is very far from the closest road, about nine kilometers, so this is maybe the most remote mountain that you can climb. The layout of this trail is very unique because it's a long walk to the mountain, long flat walk, then it's a steep climb in the middle of the trail basically because you have to get back down and do the same long walk back. how it looks like the mountain from this side you can look at it from three different sides and it looks completely different that's that's uh, unique about this mountain I found a song on Musicbed 
they're not paying me to say this, but uh, it's a really, it's a really nice song. I will use it for the final climb in the video. They were here long before me. You know, while doing this hike, I mean, that's what you have to think about. Looking at these mountains, at these giants all around you. They were here long before me. They have seen ages. <laughs> if these stones could speak, I'm wondering what stories would they tell us? One story would surely be that of the cruelty of men. On top of the ridge of Silwen stands a wall, which remains a mystery until today. No one really knows why it's there or who built it. But the most probable version is that during the Highland Potato Famine in the mid-19th century, landlords ordered to do labor in return for food rations, and often the work was some absurd vanity, like this one here. Wow, look, there's even a beach. How cool is that? Something that you wouldn't expect here. Okay, but now it's time to get up there. Look how I get here. Hey. There's still some ice left. It's the north side of the mountain. So, I have to plan for my way back. Oh, I almost forgot. Okay, let's play it. They were here long before me. 
and they will outlive me. But I am blessed that our ways have crossed, and meeting them makes me wonder who is their creator, this grand artist. Yeah, to him be the glory forever. Amen. Thank you.